Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation. But not just an ordinary cubic equation, we do have an extra variable here, a as a parameter, so this is going to be a very interesting problem. I don't know if you've seen this problem before, I don't think you have seen it anywhere. If you did, please let me know, and you can write it in the comment section. All right, let's get started, and if you want to pause the video and try this problem yourself, this is a good time to do that. All right, let's get started. Now, I do have a cubic equation, but uh, to make matters worse, I also have A here. So what I'm going to do is, I would like to write this as a perfect cube. And the reason why I do that is because that'll make things a lot easier. And it's possible to do it, so let me tell you why. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to isolate the A. So I will go ahead and add a to both sides, right? This is what I'm gonna be getting. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by two. Now, couldn't we use the cubic formula here? Yes, we could, but that would really complicate things. Uh, Cardano, you know, came up with the formula or Tartaglia, doesn't matter who came up with the formula. Someone came up with the formula, right? There's a cubic formula, but that's quite complicated and you don't wanna get into that. We wanna solve it in a smart way. Okay, and this equation is a good one for that purpose. So. I will multiply both sides by two, and then you will see in a little bit why I do that. Maybe you already noticed. Okay, let's multiply everything by two. Now, if you look at the left-hand side very carefully, it, look like, it looks like something, doesn't it? What does it look like? Well, in order to make it look more like it, we can go ahead and subtract one from both sides, and now hopefully you're able to see what it looks like. Yes, the left-hand side is a perfect cube because I can write it as 2x minus 1 to the third power. Awesome. And 2a minus 1 is considered a constant here. Okay, so we're solving for x, basically. How do you solve for x? You can cube root both sides. So if you do, you'll be getting 2x minus 1 is the cube root of 2a minus 1. Then I can add one to both sides, then I'll be getting cubit of 2a minus one plus one, and then you can divide both sides by two, and that's going to be our x. So, this equation is cubic, right? So it has three solutions, and this is one of them. And this is a real solution. Why do I say that? Because if you look at it carefully, this is the cube root of a number, so it's always defined, right? For any a value, this is defined and real. Great. So now we're going to find we're going to find the other solutions. But here's a million dollar question. Are the other solutions real or non-real? Okay? We're going to decide. But let me tell you what they are. No, no, let me not tell you right now because I want you to keep going. Okay? So stay tuned and watch till the end. Okay. And I'll tell you what's going on here. So, this is one of the solutions and obviously we started off with a cubic equation and we got this. So what I can do is I can actually divide both sides, like I can do polynomial division, but that's gonna be kind of crazy. We're going to use a different method here. So our approach is going to look like follows. So if you look at this expression carefully, I do have the cube of something equals something else. So what I can do is I can actually put everything on the same side and write it like this. And there's a reason why we put that expression in parentheses. Now, the first part is a cube, but the second part isn't a cube, but we can make it a cube. So what does it look like? Well, I can write it as the cube root of 2a minus 1, which is something that I use in my solution, correct? Cubed, right? And that would be correct. Okay, this is always true because, as you know, with the cube roots, if the expression under the radical is negative, then its cube is negative, its cube root is negative, so on and so forth. So this is going to work all the time. Now, what do we do with this? Well, the left-hand side looks like what? Difference of two cubes. Awesome. Then we can factor it. How do you factor difference of two cubes? Let's take a look. Okay, so suppose I have something like this. Okay, I'm going to use different variables so we don't get confused. Suppose you have something like y cubed minus b cubed. How do you factor it? You can factor it as y minus b multiplied by 
y squared plus yb plus b squared. All right. So this can be proven with the cubic formula. You know, the binomial theorem can be used, so on and so forth. We can talk about that later. Now, this is for difference of two cubes, and I do have a difference of two cubes. So we can go ahead and factor it, but we're going to have to deal with lots of radicals here. So in my opinion, I think that's a good strategy. We can just go ahead and call this one y and call this one b and then just solve this equation for y and b and then substitute at the end so we don't have to write those radicals every time because you're going to have to write a cube root of 2a minus 1, cube root of 2a minus 1 squared, cube root of 2a minus 1, so on and so forth, right? You're going to have to write it too many times. So let's go ahead and use this as a pattern. So what are the solutions for this equation? If I set it equal to 0, what happens? First, I get y equals b, obviously, and that means that 2x minus 1 is equal to the cube root of 2a minus 1. And as you know, we get our solution from here, which I said to be real, right? For reals, yes. So this is our real solution. What about the other ones? Are they not real? We'll find out, okay? All right, so how do we solve the other ones? Okay, good. That's a good question. So to solve for the other solutions, to get the other solutions, we can set this expression equal to zero, right? And then proceed from here. Okay, so what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to solve for y, so I'm hoping to get y by itself here, so I can use a little trick. Well, I could also use the quadratic formula, but this is a cooler method. I like it. Okay, so what I can do is I can actually complete the square. What do I need to add to complete the square? Well, I do have y squared plus yb, so if I add b squared over 4, this is going to be a perfect square, and you'll see in a little bit why that's the case. And of course, I have this number left, 3b squared over 4, because when you add those, you get b squared. But why did I separate b squared over 4? Because now this becomes a perfect square. Isn't that perfect? Yay. Okay. So now we do have this sum, which is equal to 0. Obviously, I can isolate y plus b over 2 squared here. That's going to be negative 3b squared over 4. Now, can b equal 0? No. b does not equal 0. Why? Because we don't want it to be 0, first of all. Why would it be 0, right? I mean, if you don't want it to be 0, if b is equal to 0, then you get y equals 0, which is kind of not very interesting. Okay, so anyways, so in this case, b is not going to be 0. If b is not equal to 0, what do you notice? Well, this expression is always going to be less than 0. Hmm, that's interesting. Square of something is negative. No square is negative, which means you do not get real solutions from here. The other solutions will be complex. How do you find them? Very easy. We're going to solve for y here using complex solutions, imaginary i, and then we'll substitute. Okay? So this basically tells you that if you s factor difference of two cubes, you don't get three solutions. You only get one real solution. Okay, the others are not real. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this for y. So I have the square of something. So what I can do at this point is I can square root both sides. But don't forget when you square root this expression, you'll go, you're going to be getting square root of 3b over 2. And of course, there's going to be a plus minus sign here with i, right? That's the square root of that expression because obviously square root is not real. So we have to use i. Then if you add b over 2 or negative b over 2 to both sides, then you'll be getting something like this, right? That's interesting. Root 3 over 2 kind of looks interesting, doesn't it? It reminds us trigonometry. Awesome. Then I can write it in an even better way. Just write it as negative b plus minus the square root of 3b i over 2. Beautiful. This is the y, but remember, I did some replacements here. So we need to go back and back substitute. Okay. What is y? What is b? Well, y is equal to 2x minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to replace y with 2x minus 1. Awesome. And the b is going to be what? b is going to be... b is going to be the cube root of 2a minus 1, right? The cube root, not the... it's cube, that's the cube root of 2a minus 1. So let's go ahead and do that. 
b is equal to cube root of 2a minus 1. Awesome. And it's, it's, the, it's a constant. So we have the negative cube root of 2a minus 1 plus minus the square root of 3 multiplied by the cube root of 2a minus 1, i, all over 2. I'm not done yet because I still need to solve for x. So let's go ahead and add 1 to both sides. Adding 1 to both sides means adding 2 to the numerator. So that is going to look like this. I'll get 2 minus cube root of 2a minus 1. And I can just go ahead and distribute the 3. So it's going to look like the cube root of 6a minus 3 multiplied by i all over 2. And if you divide both sides by 2, this will become a 4. Okay? So we get three solutions. The first one being the cube root of 2a minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2, which is the real solution. And the other solutions are going to be the non-real solutions. So this is going to be all the solutions to my equation we were supposed to solve for all the x values. And this is it. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I really like this problem. I hope you share the same passion and love. Please let me know. And I'll see you in the next video, which is going to be an awesome geometry puzzle. See you later. Bye-bye.